In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to perform a simple linear regression test in R. Before I do, I just wanted to quickly mention that if you want to learn more about performing regression in R, then I suggest that you check out DataCamp's online course. DataCamp is an online learning environment where you can learn R by performing interactive exercises directly in your browser, and you can get started for free. If you're interested, I'll leave an affiliate link in the description below. Now let's get straight into R Studio and get started with this tutorial. For this tutorial, I'm going to use the trees data set that is readily available within R, so you can follow along if you want to. I'll download the trees data set by entering data, open bracket, trees, and then close the bracket and then press enter. You can now see the trees data frame has been added into the environment. And if I select it, you can see that it's a very simple data set that only contains three variables. Specifically, these are measures of girth, height, and volume of 31 different cherry trees. What I want to do is to perform a simple linear regression to see how well the measures of girth can predict the measures of volume of the trees. Before I perform the regression, let me firstly start by creating a very basic scatter plot so you can see the relationship between the two variables. To do this, I will use the plot function and enter the following code. As you can see, there seems to be a good positive linear correlation between the two variables. Now let's get on to performing the linear regression test. Performing a simple linear regression in R is pretty easy. There are no additional packages to install. You can simply use the LM or linear model function. What I will do is save the results in an object called results. I will then pass the following into this object. LM open bracket, then you want to enter the variable name that you want to predict. This is the y variable, otherwise known as the dependent variable. In this example, for me, this would be volume. Then I will enter the tilde sign, and I will follow this with the name of the x variable, otherwise known as the independent variable. For me, this will be girth. I'll then add a comma and type data equals, and I'll add the name of the data frame that contains the data. In this case, it's called trees. Finally, I will close the bracket and run the code. After running the code, I can now see a new object called results is in my environment. To view the results of the linear regression test, I will use the summary function. I'll now go through the output in a bit more detail. At the top where it says call, this is simply a repeat of the code entered into the regression test. Next, we have the information about the residuals. A residual is simply the distance between the actual data point and the line of best fit. So I can see that the minimum residual was negative eight and the maximum residual was positive 9.5. There's also information about the first and third quartiles as well as the medium residual values. For a linear regression test, it is assumed that the residuals are normally distributed. So what you ideally want to see here is a medium value close to zero. Also, you want to see that the first and third quartiles roughly reflect each other and for the same between the minimum and maximum values. It's better to investigate the residuals further to assess normality, such as plotting the data on a histogram and a QQ plot. I'll demonstrate these in future video tutorials. Moving on, we have the results for the coefficients. In the first row, you will see the results for the y-intercept. This is the point where the regression line crosses the y-axis when the value of x is zero. So for my example, this occurs when y is negative 36.9. Under this, you will find the slope coefficient value for the independent variable. In my example, this is girth. And with the intercept and slope values, we can now create our linear model equation. For a simple linear regression model, the most basic version of the equation is y equals m multiplied by x plus b, where y is the predicted value of the dependent variable volume in this example, m is the slope of the line of best fit, x is the value of the independent variable, girth in this example, and b is the intercept. And using the information reported from the results, we can say that y equals 5.0659 multiplied by x subtracts 36.9435. So in this example, if we knew a tree's girth value or diameter, we can predict their volume by replacing x with the girth value. At the far right of the coefficients table, you will see the p-value for the intercept and the slope. To interpret these results, I'll present my hypotheses. The null hypothesis is that the intercept or slope coefficient value is zero. 
On the other hand, the alternative hypothesis is that the intercept or slope coefficient value does not equal zero. And usually with an alpha of 0.05, we would reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative hypothesis if the p-value was less than 0.05. The opposite would be true if the p-value is greater than 0.05. So we would fail to reject the null hypothesis. Looking at the two p-values, I can see that they are considerably lower than 0.05. And if you're wondering what E stands for, this is just the textual version of 10 to the power of. So 2e negative 16 just means 2 times 10 to the power of negative 16. So to interpret the two p-values, we can just say that both the intercept and slope values are not equal to zero. Usually when interpreting the coefficients results, it's common to ignore the p-value for the intercept and just look at the p-value for the slope. In this example, we can say that girth is a significant variable that impacts volume in this case. Moving on, under the coefficient table, we can see the p-value codes. These are just asterisks. Here we can see that three asterisks indicate a p-value between 0 and 0 0.001. And finally, we have a few statistics of the linear model at the bottom of the output. The residual standard error is the average distance that the observed values fall from the regression line. And the smaller the standard error, the more precise the linear regression model is. And there's also the degrees of freedom. Under this, we have the multiple R squared value. The multiple R squared value tells you how much variance the dependent variable can be accounted for by the values of the independent variable. And if we multiply this value by 100, we get a percentage value. In this example, we can say that 93% of the variance in volume can be accounted for by the girth measures. The other 7% of the variance is therefore caused by other factors, such as measurement errors. And next we have the adjusted multiple R squared. This value takes into account the number of independent variables in the regression analysis and corrects for any bias. Usually this value is only relevant when you are performing multiple linear regression, where there are more than one independent variables in the model. And finally, on the bottom row, we have the results of the F-test. There's the F statistic and the degrees of freedom, which are in turn used to calculate the p-value for the regression model. Essentially, this is like performing a Pearson correlation test on the two variables. The null hypothesis would be there is no linear relationship between the girth and volume measures. And my alternative hypothesis would be there is a linear relationship between the girth and volume measures. And as you can see, the p-value is ridiculously small a lot smaller than my alpha level of 0.05. So we conclude that the linear regression model is significant. In other words, there is a significant linear correlation between the two variables. So that's an overview of performing a linear regression test in R. Before I finish, I'll quickly show you how to add a regression line onto a scatter plot, which is probably something that you're wanting to do next. Let me replot the scatter plot from before. And to add the regression line, you simply pass the linear regression results into the add line function. So for my example, this will look like this. And as you can see, the regression line has been added onto the graph. And that brings me to the end of this tutorial. You now know how to perform a simple linear regression test in R. If you found this video useful, please leave a like. It really does help support the channel. If you've got a question, pop it down in the comments below. Also, consider subscribing for more weekly tutorials.